Hello, how have you been? There, uh, the thunderstorm coming up, so it might uh, screw up with my internet. So if the feed drop, well, that's what's happening. Or the feds came out to my place and shot me. That was probably the storm. But hopefully we're going to be able to go through uh, without being without interruption. This shouldn't be too long of a stream anyway. I just wanted to talk about, um, well, well, you saw the title, like where you should do campaign play. And this kind of like a, a bit of reaction or reply, I would say, to a Shauner video. Shauner did a reply or a commentary on my last video about the shopping session. And he made some very good point in it. Because I made the video and I talk about, oh, you should abstract those shopping sessions. I should have precise that once you're doing a, when you're doing a campaign play. Because if you do a one shot, like Shauner tend to do more one shot, like that's what he likes to do. If you do one shot and the character go shop for something then you kind of have to make it significant you have to have something happen there and you can like i i uh mentioned in the in the video as well that you can do that you can have like something happen when you when the, the character of shopping in a campaign but only some of the time if you do it all the time it becomes silly but in the one shot like the the action should be condensed you you should uh like the fat should be trimmed so if the the players start with the equipment they get it should be enough to get them to the adventure they're on if they need to go buy something it's it has to be kind of important like you wouldn't like you wouldn't be like a, just in the middle of a like some kind of adventure when things are unfolding quickly and suddenly say, oh, you know what? I'm I need to go to my grocery shopping. You know, that's not gonna happen. You don't have like downtime in a one shot. So if you do a one shot, yeah, the shopping session is gonna be like if the, like because that's what I said. If you go and buy something, then it it has to be like quite relevant. Like hello, uh Justin, and congratulations on being first. Hello, crafting gamer. Thanks for uh, joining us. And also, like in the so in the comments, like I was replying to uh, Shoner, like saying that, well, you know what, I, what I meant, I should have precise was mostly for campaign, because in campaign there's going to be like many shopping sessions, like or where the characters need to upgrade their gear, their equipment, and stuff like that, and those you might want to abstract. And Shoner asked, what part don't you abstract in a campaign, or something like that? I'm paraphrasing here. I don't have the I don't have the, the comment in front of me, but and maybe maybe thinking, you know what? I'm I'm gonna try talk a bit about why I think campaigns are good and what advantage they have over over one shot. And I'm not saying that one shot are not good. One shot are perfectly fine there, especially if you want to try systems stuff like that. Although there's always part of a system you won't be able to try in one shot. If you look for a more uh, cinematic experience, the one shot can be great for that. Because, like I said, you trim all the fat. You just go like to what's good, what's fun. But you do miss something. Like I would say, like the campaign is a bit like more like a TV show or a series, a book of uh, a series of book, like a fantasy series, whatever. And I got to say, I don't run. Maybe I don't run campaign like most people because I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, like I don't, I don't like the monster of the week type of a campaign. I think they kind of they, they get a, they kind of get the semi. I don't like the. I don't know if you all can all, all hear the dog growl. I don't like the constant dungeon delve. Like I like you can do that for a while, but at some point you have to evolve. You have to move on. And I think I always thought that in D and D. I don't do the level 1 to 20. I've never done it. I probably never will. I don't care for it. I think it's too long. There's too many levels. And the power curve is too steep. You know, like there's too much difference between the 20 level character and the first level character. I think it should have been like crunched down a bit. You want a character to get better and stuff like that. But like now it's they don't even compare. And because, uh, and that causes a problem that you don't you don't want to like the fast like it would make the campaign very long if you want to do level one to level 20 and then you have to do the same thing over and over again or you go to 12 dungeon 
and then you fight like those big monster and like there are all kind of like a bunch of stats but slightly different and then you do the political intrigue for a little while and then you like at some point it becomes like you get into this loop that becomes repetitive if you because you have to get the xp to get to the next level then there's how you can do milestone and you can do fast leveling fast leveling but then it also becomes silly because your character like grow so much stronger so fast that it doesn't make any sense you know like you, you, you cannot say like oh you go to a, a dungeon and uh, in the middle of the dungeon you go to level two and then by the end of the dungeon you're level three like you you get so powerful i would much prefer if the power curve was like like yeah crunched down like you want a high level character to be stronger but not that stronger and it also the the power curve being so steep it also uh make make it so that like low level monster at some point are just like not a threat to a uh, high level character and sometime regardless of their number like oh your ac and your defense get so high that doesn't matter if there's like 40 cobbles against you you're probably gonna just like you're gonna get a while but you're gonna get through them i like when low level monster are always a threat if not by themselves in number and I think uh, I think this is something that uh, just the power curve in D and D kind of miss. So that that's the thing. Like I like campaign, but that's not what I'm talking about when I say I like campaign. And so let's uh, look at the chat before I continue. If I had some people to game with, so I continue my mini pin thing. I've done 15 in five days. I said that's good. 15 like three a days. It's not too bad, I guess. But yeah, like. It's better than what I do because I don't like I don't have much time to paint. Uh, I miss it. So I'm too busy. I, I'm always like a ten thousand thing in that I'm doing in the same time. But I want to play a campaign where my character's name is uh, Solmi Shekelstone, and all I want to do is aggle. If we don't have an extended shopping scene, how am I supposed to do that? That's a good question, eh? Maybe D and D is not the right game for. Have you tried Monopoly? Maybe that's a better game for that. <laughs> if a uh, player's fiddle farting around that room shopping scene, it's player fiddle farting around. Yeah. Well, I want it to take too long. They want to look. Oh, do they have that? Do they have this? Do they have that? So, what do I like about the uh, campaign play? I like, and I talked about some of it uh, before, like especially in my Tears of Play video. If you haven't watched that, I think it was a good one. You should uh, go back and look at it if you did, if you haven't. The what I like in uh, in campaign in uh, it's uh, the long term character development, and like I said, it's not just about getting stronger or going from level one to level to level twenty. It's about your character grows through event and is changed by those events there's this saying uh i think it's an african saying but i quite like it that a man cannot step in the same river twice because the man has changed and the river has changed think about that you know you try to do the same thing and uh, sometimes we often we often see when we kind of feel nostalgic about something of our youth we try to go back to it it doesn't feel the same yeah because we're not the same so um and i think this should be the same for the for the character you play in the campaign you can get into the mindset of this character and getting the mindset of, like that's what role playing is about you get into the mindset of the character and you went to all those events that could be dramatic in a lot of ways and think about how how would you be how, like how not you but how this character would be changed by those events I, like the evolving psyche of the character i think like you you can see some of it in a one shot but you can like take it to the next level in a long-term campaign so this is something i quite like i quite like also that in campaign it can allow you to discover and evolve the world that the characters are evolving through like i, I don't uh, 
like I said, when I build a world, I like to have like a central conflict. Something there's something going on in the world that's bigger than the character. Eventually, the characters can get to interact with that, but at first, it's kind of like in the background, not something that is like world threatening, like something that is it's a big event, but it's not like well, the world, you know, it's not like a somebody's coming to destroy the planet. You know what I mean? It's like a war or something like that, um, and a religious change uh, or Something, something that like does cause turmoil into the world, but it's still like human level scale. And with the long term campaign, you can explore those ideas and see how it, how the characters goes evolve through that. How they, they and at some point they get to interact with that that conflict. And you have to remember, characters has to be the star of the story. The setting and the world is not the start of the story. That's a mistake a lot of people do when they create their world, and like, and they do a lot of world building and they make those fancy thing, and now they want to expose their creation to the player. The player is the is their audience. You shouldn't do that. The players are not there to be your audience. You create a world, but the world evolve with the player and the character with their input with the, what they want to do. So you have to be flexible. You have to be willing to kill your darling and to adapt it to fit where the emergent narrative goes. Monopoly does not offer enough depth in my scheme and combining. How do you bring down a government in Monopoly through the art of haggling? Uh, that's uh, you have to go with usury. So if you put like people in debt and then you can like uh, convince them to try to get the I people in power into that. Anyway, that's a, that's a, that's why you do like a war war band uh, stream. <laughs> it's gonna be something to talk about. Hey, Flame Zombie, nice seeing you. I always try to think about my character would feel when they first take a life. That's a very good, and that's something that's often like a, uh, in wave. But like, yeah, killing some somebody, uh, somebody intelligent, even killing an animal, it's not something that is trivial. Except if it's like a bug or something, but that's something I like. I look exactly. A lot of people don't uh, consider it. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? Hey, hello, Charlotte. Nice seeing you. If the player thinks a character's annoying as hell, be ready for them to be killed. Yeah, just for being annoying. You know, like oh. <clears throat> that kind of break the role play because would you do that? You know, like we always have to deal with the annoying people. If your solution to that is to kill them, well, then you're a fucking psychopath. You know, like you can avoid them, you can like shoot them away. You can, but yeah. Also, if you're the GM and the character is annoying, and the and the PC, the player character is trying to sh show him show him away, and like at some point, also like a, a normal person would move away. You know, like they wouldn't wait until they get killed. Nobody like there were very few people that insistent. Can't make essential NPC. Yeah. So yeah, exploring and and uh, deepening the world, seeing uh, where thing goes, like this initial conflict, seeing it evolves, getting the players to interact with it at some point, having the character make an impact in the world, and because when you do a one shot or even when you do a campaign, you can start at any level of any any tier of play. Hey, get on. You can start at any level of play. So if you want to start like eye level and you want to have the character have an impact already, that's all right. But if you start, if you do the campaign and you start with the low level character and they make their own place in the wall, I think that's uh th then it feels earned. You I, like you it's not a ah oh, the dog is annoying now. Dog's barking. I hope you know it's not too loud for you. So yeah, the you 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 can build up like a the characters start making their place in the world. They go like they start and they're nobodies, and at some point they become somebodies, and at some point they become like the the top dog in the you know. But and you could start like with the player or with being somebody if you want to do like an intrigue political campaign. Like oh, you're already noble. You've been doing you're doing that. You put some backstory. But if you start with the at the low level, 
you, the, the the player they know their backstory because like when they arrive to that that because that's what they played already you know it's the first few level when you start the game you have a backstory because you you didn't like sprout out of nowhere and you have a reason a motivation you have, there, there's a reason why you're, you're becoming an adventurer you want to have that but then when you become like somebody in the world it comes from somewhere some somewhere you know you know uh you know where it comes and also the campaign allow allow for a slower pace in a one shot because of often time especially if you do one shot that's shorter uh you can do one shot that'd be like five hours six hours whatever and you can you can do a lot in one shot but it's uh like i said all the fight is trim in the campaign you can allow a little more of it it's the same thing when you watch a series you can have like a longer scene of like people around a campfire talking in a movie often time that's going to be like boiled down to the essential if the conversation need to happen if some some information need to be exchanged there's like an art to it when you write for a movie it's different than for writing for tv not that people writing for tv and movie know anything about writing anymore but it used to be but yeah, you can have like more room to breathe. You can take it like a little slower and stuff like that. And those moments are often time like where good role play can happen. So there's that to consider as well. And it's also like campaigns are great for intrigue because you can have like those mysteries that uh, like and it's it's ironic because people like they like when people think about intrigue and mystery game they talk about Call of Tulu and they all say like oh Call of Tulu is great for one shot, but it's also great for campaign because you can start like with those ordinary people that get involved into something, and now they get thrown into this mystery, and they kind of find some answer, but every answer they find leads to more question. And now they got like at some point they were ordinary people and they went to that first adventure. They're not ordinary people anymore. They are people that went to that those events. So now you can keep playing with those characters. And like I said, they evolve, they change. Let's uh, see. I thought of a comment. I like that. Hey Black Lodge, nice seeing you. Nice seeing you, Mage as well. Yeah, it's, I've said it one. If player commit outright murder, they should be pursued by the law at some point. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, like, and that's also like a big part of very similar in the world. You want to have consequence to the to the, to your action. Yeah, it's a lot about the character and the world. If they escalate to violence right away, but must do. That's because like, and I think a lot lot of lot of them do because they don't. They're not immersed in the world. For they're still in the, they're they're still playing a game. They they didn't like adopt the mindset of their character, and they don't they don't emerge themselves or immerse themselves in this living world that is a real place. I think you that's something that we have to uh, kind of like uh, have the player understand at some point. Like like it's like not every player because you you would play like some people and they would get it right away, but the people that don't get it, you kind of like to you know what. This is a place. This is a world. There's going to be consequence to your action. It's not like a video game where you just like turn the corner and the guard forget about you. You turn the corner and you crouch and then like, oh, where did you go? Well, let's go back to normal. You know, like that's video game stuff and bad video game stuff on the of it. We don't do that in role playing game. One thing that can help with writing a campaign to keep it simple, start with just a plain, simple war or of secession. Then if you want to spin it off from there, exactly, keep it simple. Uh, RPG Grandma did a good video about that. Keep it simple, uh, Kiss, like the, the, the Kiss, uh, I forgot the title exactly. If you look on our channel, it's, it's Kiss, uh, like like uh, keep it simple, stupid, the old saying. And it was a good video she did, I recommend it. My daughter tried to kill NPCs she doesn't discriminate either. Surf, Lord, etc. She doesn't care. How old is she? Maybe that's a good uh, learning moment, teaching moment. I am the law. 
it was what is what does that call slow i don't i don't get that reference i am the law it was that called slow i uh, if, if that's a reference to something i don't get it details comes in the session yeah exactly that the, the world get fleshed out by exploring it and as a gm that's great too because you you don't necessarily know upfront what the world is you're discovering it with the player as well what we mean by campaign a long-running game or planned story absolutely a long-running game i don't do planned story you put seed you put some conflict you put some drama you don't know where it goes i made a video like it was a short video like uh rpgs for a gardener not architect gardener architect are often the two type of writer the architect plan out everything make an outline and you know it's the story beat and then it just like write the the story to go from one beat to the next the gardener plan seat and look how it grows when you're a gm or when you're a player in rpg you should kind of be the gardener and even for players as well that means no character build you don't plan your character from level 1 to 20 like before the first session you look how your character is going to evolve through time with what makes sense dog or you say one shot and his instincts are good so he opposed the concept he's a good dog but like uh especially like now that like i said there's a storm coming out so like the the wind starting to move around it, it giving it, it make him a little bit uh excited I had several sessions with no combat. That would be really the point thing. D and D twenty one shot low. Yeah, but like that's the thing in a campaign, you can have those, and and no combat. That's the thing too. People say no combat, but it's not combat you want. It's conflict, and you want drama and stuff like that. Like that that's what you need. So there's a difference there. Like no combat, that doesn't. It's not a problem at all, but you still need to have like some form of tension, some form of conflict. Otherwise, otherwise those kind of can be kind of feel like a wasted session. If something needs to happen, you know. Can you trust people that have fallen that have fallen change? Can you trust people that have fallen change? I've been told people who evolve and change have bad optics. But we all change. We all change in our life. I hope you're not the same guy in your 30s that you were in your 20s you know what i mean you, you're supposed to change you you get wiser and it doesn't mean like you change like like all over like you, you don't do you don't do necessarily a 180 but you refine yourself you you focus on the essential you get rid of a uh, of what is not uh what, what didn't work when you're young you're always like full of bad ideas and uh, you get older, you get more bitter, but you can know where you're going. Nothing help flush, I guess, flesh, flesh out a world like consequences. In every Elder Scroll game, you kill the tones for randomly, the guards are coming for you. They're coming for you for about like 30 seconds. If you can escape their attention, then they forget about you. Uh, it's RPG Grandma. That's the name of a channel. Uh, she, did, she did about... Uh, I think it's Kiss Wall Building, something like that. Uh, I, I, sh I, I didn't know we'd talk about that, but like, a, yeah, RPG Grandma, she just like uh, caught it like that. I am the law as the catch line of Judge Dredd. That's the only thing I can think of, yeah. Exactly, you can't run a good session while writing a plot line, otherwise your playing just have no agency. Exactly. You got it. I occasionally like exposition session as long as it's done through investigation. But I suppose the conflict would be with obscure knowledge in itself in an esoteric way. Yeah, that is that is a that is a conflict in itself. Like trying to resolve some because like why why do you want to investigate something? There must be something that push you through it. There must be something you're trying to achieve. This is where the conflict lies. You know, you're trying to untie a knot or something. Fleshed out. Yeah, I got it. Not in Morrowind. Those guards are rootless. Are rootless. Oh, yeah, really? I haven't played Morrowind. I started with Oblivion, I got to say. There's a big part of my life I didn't play video games. So so back to campaign. I like that. I like it. Well, I do those live to interact with the chat. So that's what it is. Back to campaign. 
uh, I talked before with about the tier of play, so like the personal, the local, uh, national, mondial, universal. This is kind of like the level of threat, or what you, uh, or what you, at what level you interact with. So the first one, your low level, like you, out to help yourself. Like you, usually you're gonna go adventure. You're gonna become like a some kind of mercenary, something like that, because you need to, or you're gonna be thrust into it against your will sometime. And then by that, you make a name for yourself. And then like people around you seek out your help because you, you come with a, to be a capable person. And then from there, it goes up and more and more people, important people look for your attention. And you can get that in the, like I said, you can start campaign or a one shot at any of those level. But if you do it as a campaign, it gives you the chance to experience all those different level, ex like experience the different the different type of play, and like I said, it does feel earned. Like you you know, you don't have to explain off screen where you're that where you're there. You uh, the players know the people know. I'm just gonna for and say a TV show TV show example that I think are good example of campaign because you want to. I don't like doing monster of the week because those become semi. If every week you go and there's a monster, you go kill it and stuff like that. At some point you just get bored of those. Like and that that's when campaign campaign fizzle fizzle out because like there's well, it doesn't matter. There's no like build up, there's no overarching plot. You know, you just go there, oh there's this threat, you deal with the threat, it's done. And also like a lot of those TV show, there's a lot of TV show that, that are formatted like that. And at some point, if they don't, they don't change the format. If they don't introduce an overarching arc, people lose interest. That's the same thing as well. And those like those TV show, they 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 try to uh, stretch out the sauce as much as they can. And at some point, they get canceled, and nobody really care because like, well, oh, it's oh, I like it. It was a fun time. I could shut my brain off and just sit there in front of the TV and watch at the those, those uh, heroes fight those monsters. But then, like, it doesn't matter in the long run. There's no. Uh, there is no build-up or anything like that. I don't like also going dungeon after dungeon. At some point, like you can do some, but at some point you go to do something else. And you want to, if you do some, also why are your character keep doing that? Like they didn't get enough money. Like try to give like a reason for it. Try to give a build-up, or maybe one character got like a a map that is like something special that he knows about those locations. Maybe they get maybe they get hired to go recuperate ancient artifact maybe like there should be something that they're trying to do like even if you go dungeon after dungeon there should be some kind of goal that link those that link those together why they do that and at some point this goal should be reached or something else should get in the way that now oh, now they cannot do that anymore because something else happened and they go and they have to go take care of something else and now they go from one event to the next and at some point they get time to go back to the dungeon but then it doesn't matter anymore because like they didn't so much they don't need to that do that anymore you pass that and also like the episodic play like i said like if everything like every session is self-contained and doesn't have an impact on the following session campaign is going to fizzle out uh tv show that did it right firefly is a good example because there was like there were adventure that was kind of self-contained, but you would discover the world through it. And there was something building up and it, been, it got canceled too fast. But it's a good example also because you can see with the difference with the of pacing with the TV show. In Firefly, the, the show didn't, I didn't uh, wasn't afraid to take its time to expose stuff, to make us discover the world. When the movie came out, you're kind of rushed into it and you have like to kind of get along you have to get it as it goes you know there's no time to leave some some uh, some room to breathe breaking bad one of the best uh, written tv show because you can really see that with uh walter at first he get his uh get his diagnosis for cancer then he decide to try this because he want to get money that's like the low level place, kind of like trusting to it for personal reason. And the more it goes, 
the more get involved into bigger shit and, and at some point you become the man. And there's even like this nice wrap up at the end. If for some reason you haven't watched uh, Breaking Bad, it's one of the TV shows that is worth watching. There might be like one season that is a little weaker, but there's this big arch and there's this build up. And we go from like those, this goofy guy trying to uh, just make some money for his family to becoming something bigger. And there is no going back. Then there's this nice wrap up at the end where the characters has been changed. That would be like a great, cam- well, it's kind of like a weird subject, <laughs> but it's a great idea of a campaign there. Of course, when you look at those things, you always have to, like those TV shows, or they have one protagonist, so you kind of have to adapt for a party, depending on the number of a player you have. But it's kind of the idea. Another one that did it, that did it great was uh, Rome. When you start with the characters, like Apollo and uh, Lucius, that they are just a guy in the in the army, and then they go through some adventure. Something happens, and then one goes into politics. One goes into organized crime. Then he goes to be a mentor for Augustus. There's a lot of build up as well. The character change, the character evolve, the character grow with the experience. Great example. Great TV show as well. And also, uh, if you I haven't looked at it. The I'm not a, I'm not a weeb by uh, any mean. Like I'm not like a filthy weeb. But the Berserk manga is a great piece of fiction, and you got that in trove. Uh, there's this old flashback thing, but if you go back to chronological, you start with guts, the main character being like a mercenary when he's a youth, and he's on he doesn't trust anybody. But then he finds this group of mercenary that's kind of like different, and then he learns to make friends and to rely on people. And then he goes to those traumatic events with the eclipse. And and then he's changed again. His trust is broken. He, but then he learned as new to like, it's a great piece of fiction. If you want to see like a character change and evolve and the action that he takes and the, the making his place in the world, the thing that matters, it's a great... Uh, it's it's a great uh, great great book series. It's manga. It's easy to read, but you can see the progression there. Let's look at what the chat says. Alt alt. Yeah, they are about the the Elder Scroll. Yeah, it's up when the guard forget who you are after a second. But I also didn't get how guards have a very thorough intercom and walkie-talkie system in a medieval s- s- setting. And all the security camera that's true as well and that's if you if you know that as well because like guards would have to rely on the description and stuff like that so sometimes you could get away and maybe you can change your appearance maybe you can try to disguise yourself and you wouldn't take that much but it's also uh it could also be a a a, a source of mistaken identity maybe they did think maybe they do think that you're some criminal and you get wrongly accused, this could happen because guards would rely on the just physical description. Maybe you do look like somebody else. My players subdued the local art chief, Frivol Warben, without needing any reward. They just did it to gain his attention, so he's giving them a bigger job. Yeah, exactly. That's the reason, that's the reason why. Get some reason why. Telepathy and psych and psych and psych, psychic. Apparently exists in the Elder Scroll, but never appeared in game mechanic. Just talked about, and it's just for the guards. The Elder Scroll is based on a DD game. The psy- the psychic might be old over from that. I think it's just like game mechanic. Just try to punish the player. At first, Walter wanted to get money for for his family. Then over time, he's get corrupted from the world around him. Yeah. That, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Like your character change, you know. Like it's interesting because imagine if you you don't know this story is gonna happen when you get into a campaign, you don't know this story is gonna happen, but you get into the mindset of your character, and then you think like, oh, if I was this character, or if, if like this character was in this situation, 
how will he impact how will he be impacted by that how will he be impacted by all the things he sees around him the bad people and the the world being so like he's exposed to a a world that wasn't ordinary for him he's exposed to a, like a different uh, reality than he's used to and that that changes you I love when a very told Skylar Skylar off ungrateful bitch. Yeah, Skylar was the worst. <laughs> you ever read the Black Company? I haven't. Uh, who made the Black Company? I think I read about it. Is that, is that like a? I read about it. I never read it. I never read it. I've mentioned Gundam a lot recently. Yeah, you did. But Gundam usually has reluctant protagonists. Uh, Amuro always try to retire and get dragged back into combat. That that and that could be like an interesting part of a story of a character, and that's something like uh, I want to talk about uh, as well. Oh, let's do that. Since I'm in Dagger Fall, sometimes the guard would be called on you even if you done nothing wrong, just because you rep with the kingdom was low. Yeah, get like get this man out of here. But yeah, the comment about uh, being retired and uh, dragged out of back into combat, that can be an interesting part as well. But like, like Shonar asked me what part of a campaign weren't uh, abstracted if you abstract shopping. But think about it. Think if you were to read the biography of some great man or a company of somebody, you know, they would tell you about the river and part of their life. But they wouldn't tell you about the time they went shopping, the time they went to the bathroom, the time they slept in too late and went, went, low, went work, low, late to work, unless it's relevant. And that's what you're kind of doing. You're, you're going to the story of somebody. So, uh, so yeah, you, you can abstract a lot. You go to what's the juicy part, what, what's going to be like eventful, what, what would be put down in a book if you were to write down afterward. You're not writing a book. You're going through a game, but you're creating you're creating a character. Create character creation is not something you do before play. It's something you do in part before play, but a big part is done through play, especially in a campaign. You you keep you keep creating your character as it evolves because, like we always uh, create ourselves. It's all about the progression. Glenn Cook wrote the Black Company. I highly agree. Uh, if you recommend it, maybe I'll look it up. So that's about uh, what I want to talk about today. What you want in your uh, long-term campaign is, uh, yeah, you want progression. You want the character to be able to change, and you want to focus on uh, what. Think about somebody would have like an exceptional life. Look at those great men of history and stuff like that. Look at the part that we write about. We. The, the 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 story that are interesting to focus on it's not the mundane and that's what you want to do and you want to intertwine those events from one to the next you don't want everything to be self-contained you want to have this overarching arch and i think that's what campaign that's where campaigns shine i got nothing against one shot and often time or so i got to say i like to start my campaign as a one shot one shot around a bit different than a normal session. They're a little more action dense. And I think it's a great way to start a campaign because you trust regular people into the action or into, into a situation they might not want to be in, it, but they have no choice. Even though like sometimes they kind of do have a choice, you know, like, like I said, like if you're an adventurer, you're going to go do something that kind of suck. Maybe because you feel trapped, you have no other choice, you know, like, oh, you're poor or you need to uh, pay those debt or you need to whatever. So you need the money. So you're going to do that. So one shot are a good way to start a campaign. But then you have those characters. You had a good time. You had good players. <laughs> they can role play. It's a great story. And you want to go see more. You can build up from something that happened in that one shot. Maybe not all the end have been like, wrap up neatly maybe there's something in suspense or something that can come back so uh, yeah campaigns are campaigns allow you to do something that one shot can so i don't think we should uh, 
I, th I think it's it's a it's a good thing to consider. And like I said, you, you don't have to decide beforehand. You can just start with a one shot, and then if if uh, not not like the player survived, that was their main goal. They're happy with that. But there's some mystery left unresolved. Then maybe that you can drag them back in and say, "Hey guys." Like, and also in a campaign, you can abstract a lot of time, so you can go back like two years later, and then the characters are, are dragged back together. There's someone and say, "We want to talk to you about those events that happened two years ago," and then they send on another mission for some reason. The Black Company was the inspiration for the mid series of, of game, fun strategy game to tough as nails. Sometime I'm not familiar with those as well. Absolutely, I tried to make the world feel bigger than the player. So many plot threads, so little time. They have to choose what problem to fix. Exactly, and it's like you want you don't want to have like it's not a sequential thing. Things are intertwined. Try to make like a timeline for the campaign, mainly just to have events events happen with or without the players, make it feel more real. If they miss out a battle or two. I like to do that. I often, like I said, I work with a calendar. I say if something is gonna happen, like, and sometimes like the characters, you're hear about something that's gonna happen in three weeks. It's gonna happen in three weeks. I keep track track of time. If you take your time, if you procrastinate, if you want to rest a lot because oh, you're gonna be injured. Time times keep ticking. So that's also something that's great with the with campaign. That sometimes in one shot, it's hard to. Uh, to, to convey like the, the world exists outside of you the world doesn't exist just for the the characters just for the players to have a place to play in it's not that it's like it is a sandbox it's not a playground for the player that is like scared, like it's specifically designed for them so events still happen people still exist i said that in the shopping video as well like the shopkeeper doesn't exist for the for the characters to interact with for the player characters to interact with he has a, a life of his own when the characters uh, get in the shop, they're in a way interrupting his life. Like are they, well, that's his job. But if they if they fuck around and they just like they're disruptive, he's gonna get pissed off because he got other thing to do. He doesn't exist. He doesn't like stop existing when the characters are not there. Like before, like he doesn't like sprout into existence when the characters step into the shop and stop existing when they step out. You, you have to kind of give like this. Uh, feeling there if you want to have your world to be believable and that's also going to make it a we're talking about like randomly ki killing npcs if you make them feel like real people that exist outside of their their, their interaction with the pcs that's going to help a lot so i think that's a i'm going to wrap that up now that's about what i want to talk about um oh hello dm johnny i was just about to uh to wrap it up i don't know where you are maybe maybe you're in a different time zone the cult of whatever is going to summon to something or another on the blood moon and your party's too busy drunking at the tavern. Yeah. Or they wanna they wanna oh I got some moon, let's have a day rest, or depending on how you do the healing. I like the slow healing as well. So kind of force slow healing and time sensitive stuff. Put the player in an interesting conflict, you know. You kind of have to push through even though you're a bit injured. I think that's more much more interesting. Like you shouldn't always go into a, a conflict with all your resource, like all your health and stuff like that. You want to be, you want to chip them away a bit. And they have the choice. Yeah, you can, you can rest, but the enemy is not going to rest while you rest. It's going to still, still keep doing stuff. If it doesn't, you need a, you're not do, go, doing a game master properly. Exactly. Oh, you're in Montreal. So you're saying fucking time zone as me. Like an hour away. <laughs> Do you know any good place to learn French on YouTube or elsewhere on the internet? Um, no, because French is my first language, so I didn't have to learn it. Uh, I do use, uh, I did use Duolingo quite a bit to uh, when I was learning Portuguese and German, and now I, I'm learning a bit of a uh, Russian. I got to say. They uh, they made some change uh, in the last year. I don't like quite as much. Uh, 
because uh, what I was saying. Yeah, they, they changed the way that the the, the, the the website work and I, I find it's uh it's worse. See after that be have a good day, uh, Mage Musing. You want me to teach you French? Yeah, if you if you come like sometimes like when I stream Warband, Warband, you come into the chat, ask me question, then I'll tell you uh, I'll tell you how to say stay stuff in stay stuff in French. Uh, fun enough, I went to university at some point, not for long though, because like uh, in the teaching of French as a second language, I wanted to do that at some point as a career. But then I went to university and I realized that the uh, I thought the people there were an alphabet, and I said, you know what, that's a that's a waste of time. The best way to learn to learn French is to become a baby and then listen to your parents speak it, and then I guess go to daycare or kindergarten. Yeah, that's a uh, that's the best way to learn any language. You just you're just born into it. Mon français c'est plus mal. Mon français c'est plus mal. How did you learn French, uh, Flim Zombie? You mentioned the other day that was your second language, and I saw you like uh, write some in French there, which would say like a uh, broken French, but that's better than no french i guess but I, and i i've like I, a lot of the language i speak now like i haven't spoken in a while so they're quite rusty i can still read them but uh when i interact and trying to make sentence like spontaneously it's quite hard so yeah i'll see you there <laughs> all right i'm gonna wrap that up uh guys uh have a good day and have a good weekend i'll i don't know if i'll be on probably not but I'll be watching certainly like uh, the Friday night chill stream tonight. So uh, if you if you join, I'll probably see you there in chat. My father gave me a raw deal. He refused to speak French to me growing up as he was traumatized by having to learn English as a French speaking immigrant to Toronto. Oh, really? I didn't know your, your father was French. I took AP French in high school and live in France for about a month. Oh, where in France do you live? It's a beautiful place if you go outside of Paris. Paris is awful, but if you go like in the rural France, it's pretty nice. Of course, as a proper English speaker, I spit on the language. <laughs> Bonjour, Max. Yeah, that's I. Bonjour. But French is a, it's a tough language to learn for English because, that, well, and like English can be English is easy to learn, but it's some some words are hard to pronounce because we have like we don't use the same part of our mouth. And even like if I, for me, like doing the switch between French and English, it can be hard because of uh, like it really use a different different muscle, different part of French like that. So um, I can, I cannot say the th as you might have noticed. <laughs> There's a joke that goes ah no I'm like just uh, rambling eh. There's a joke that goes, uh, why can't the Frenchman come to four? Because there's a tree in the way. <laughs> yeah, I've been told that joke quite a few times because I, I cannot say tree, tree. <laughs> yeah, cannot do like the TH. Send list, a, a pretty small town. Oh, yeah, when you go like rural town, rural France is, is very nice. It was French, Belgium, came to Canada in the 15s, not knowing any English. Hmm. Yeah, run with it. But yeah, that's the thing. Like I'm, I'm rambling a bit, uh, but I also have stuff to do. You know, it's like it's lunchtime stream, but I got to go back to do some work. So uh, I'll have to wrap it up here, <laughs> and I'll see you. Uh... Oh yeah, Saturday tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, so 1500 EDT. Is I'm gonna have like a. <laughs> John Torres, the basic expert. Hey, Frank, relax. John Torres, the basic expert on uh, on my RPG design talk. So we're going to talk about game design, the creative process, like those usual RPG design talk. Uh, join us then. It's going to be a fun time. John put out a, a, quite a few uh, products already. So he's a very creative guy. He's also a professional artist that made art for other RPG product. So maybe we're going to talk about that a bit uh, as well. A different side that come in, come out. My French pronunciation is worse. Uh, yeah, it's, it can be hard. <laughs> it can be hard. There's a lot of like sound that we have, like in a, that uh, 
that that we don't that you don't have in 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 a uh, in English. So like R and you know that, that's something like uh, making me laugh. Like when I see like a uh, English speaking people making fun of like Asian people for not being being to pronounce R, and I'm like, well, you can't either. You know, it's not Roma. It's like Roma. You know, <laughs> you have to. It's like the 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 Roman, the Roman used to call the R the dog letter because like you it's like you're you're it's like you're growling, like rrr. English speaking people have a hard time doing that. So before you make you make fun of uh, Asian people for saying the R like L, well you make your R like W. So <laughs> oh I didn't read that. I was reading a paper not too long ago and it said the easiest way to learn a language is to learn where your tongues need to be placed and for the sound over everything yeah but it's it's also you have to develop the muscle for it sometimes like some of them are just hard take care sean take care johnny all right all right we use the tap flap and not the erotic r in american english specifically yeah oh hello lady i was just about to wrap up so thank you for uh everybody that show up everybody that watch uh after war when the vod is on uh and i see you tomorrow hopefully at 1500 edt so 3 p.m eastern time for american and uh for rp design talk and other than that's going to be next week for those lunchtime talk take care guys have a good day see ya